how I do my simple technical analysis. So in this video, I'll just show you how I perform my technical analysis. So it will, you can view this as a practical step-by-step -step guide on how you can also uh, apply some of the principles that I'll, sh or that I'll teach you here into your own uh, technical analysis process, right? And a disclaimer, uh, this is not uh, investment advice. This is for educational purposes only. And another thing to remember is that I am more of a fundamental or a macroeconomic trader. So I focus more on the fundamentals, the economics of the economic side of things, and I use technical analysis as an entry, right? But let's get to it. So the first time frame that I start off with is the monthly time frame, right? So on the monthly time frame, there's two things that I look at. Firstly, is where are the main swing points, right? So I'll just use arrows for illustration. So we have one up here and we have the bottom one right here right that is the first thing and then secondly i'll use a fibonacci tool from that swing high to that swing low and then i need to identify where the 50 percent level is right and then after that i also need to identify if there is any supply level above that 50 percent level in this case as an example euro usd i'm looking to go short right is it overly bearish like it was in 2021, 2022? Not necessarily, but I still have my bias to the downside. So once I have identified that, I can then follow that the impulse move to the downside to see if there is any supply level where I can look to short at, right? Based on the monthly time frame. And in this case, the only one that's evident to me is the one up here, right? And for me, what characterize or the characteristics of a supply is a bearish engulfing. If there's a bearish engulfing after a bullish candle, that for me is a valid supply. Why? Because that signals momentum. The reason why this candle was able to close uh, as an engulfing candle, break the low of the previous bullish candle, it means that there was momentum to the downside. So that is what for me constitutes as a valid supply level. So in that case, this is the most appropriate or valid one in my approach right so in that case it means that i would have to wait for price to get back to these levels right here but i can also go down to the weekly time frame still have the same notion in mind and then if i go down to the weekly time frame i can see that just the first level is just right up here just above my 50 percent that's one thing i also need to to make sure of that it is above the 50 percent of the full impulse move right I won't really go that much into details, but that is one of the rules or one of the steps that I need to ensure that I have followed, right? And then and another thing, why is it important for me to make sure that my supply levels are within this impulse move to the downside? Because the reason why price was falling in simpler terms, it is because there was more sellers than buyers. That is the reason why price dropped. So if I'm going to look for areas or zones where I would look to potentially take short trades, it needs to come from this impulse move to the downside, where there was evidence that supply over exceeded demand, because if supply is greater than demand, then prices go lower. So in that case, that is why I look at supply levels only from this impulse move to the downside. So what do I mean? So even if price were to do a simple move like this, then form a valid supply level right here i would not consider shorting at this newly formed supply level why because in as much as price went low or dropped lower but there is no evidence that's that's uh, a supply exceeded demand how do i how how do i gain that evidence i gain that evidence from the monthly time frame remember all my structure is from the monthly time frame that i got so when price is pushing up the reason why price is pushing up here or one of the reasons, let me not say the reason, one of the reasons is because demand over exceeds supply, right? And that is the reason why this monthly time frame is showing us that price is pushing higher. Whether it's correction because there was profit taking, I don't know. But one of the simple, basic, obvious reasons is because supply is over exceeded by demand. And that is the reason why price is going up. So if I were to look to buy Euro USD, if I just drop to the weekly, it would only have to come from this impulse move to the upside. They, those are the only levels where I would consider looking to buy Euro USD. So for my approach, I wouldn't consider looking to, to, to take a break and retest approach. 
to trading euro usd because that would mean that i'm using this supply level as a previous resistance or supply now potentially support and that is not how i view things because remember like i said i start from a from an economic standpoint where i view or i deal mostly in the supply and demand aspect of things so those are the first key steps that i do so monthly time frame then i drop down to the weekly time frame and i've explained the reason why i'm looking for what for my level on this on this supply or oh, sorry for my supply level on this impulse move to the downside and the reason why i'm showing you like this i could have done a back test of it but i thought that I, let me just show you based on the trades that i've taken uh most recently which is going short on euro US, euro cad euro aud as well as euro nzd and then once price gets there, I won't really go that much into the entry aspect of things. But once price gets to these supply level, in this case of Euro USD, where I'm looking to go short, then I look for further confirmations on the lower time frame for me to go short, right? So that is a sim that is essentially my simple step by step approach whenever I'm doing my forex technical analysis. Because from here, it's only a waiting game until price gets to my level, right? So moving on to Euro AUD adopting the very same approach i'm gonna start on the monthly right i'm gonna start on the monthly and then i'll look at the monthly and see okay based on where we are this is the low like i said uh sorry this is the high essentially this is the swing high so here is the high and then here's the lowest low based on the swing right because price has already violated this high right here. So that is the, the, more, the, the recent trading range that we are in based on the monthly time frame. Then I take my Fibonacci from the high to the low. Really concerned about my 50% point and then any sell or, or any supply level that is above that. In this case, we had this obvious monthly supply level here. And like I said, a bearish engulfing is a supply, a valid supply. A bullish engulfing is a valid demand if I'm looking to buy then i do the very same thing i go into the weekly time frame in this case only the monthly the monthly supply was valid because you can see on the weekly time frame there's no bearish engulfing so i stick to the monthly level and then i just wait for price to get to my zone and then i use further confirmations and do not worry i'm gonna still do a video where i focus more on the actual entries how i time my entries where i use the time of day uh, and by time of day i essentially mean trading sessions where i use uh the london or new york session and how i actually time my entries as as well based on the day of the week right so those are all the things that i also get into before execution but this is just to get you started on the point of how, how do i actually identify my my, my zones where i'm looking to trade it because whenever i'm trading i'm looking to catch like big pips like a big a big move i'm looking at for 300 pips i'd say minimum right that is what i'm always aiming for 300 pips minimum right so same same approach and this is how i got my level for euro aud euro nzd as well same approach i started on the monthly where's where's the lowest where's the most recent low here's the most recent low where's the most recent high here's the most recent high based on the monthly and then same thing from the high to the low then I request my 50% and any supply level above my 50% if I'm looking to to sell, like in this in this in this example, or any what any demand levels below 50% if I'm looking to buy. So in this example, this is my monthly monthly supply. Why? Because it had a bearish engulfing candle that followed it. Simple and straightforward. And it's also in it's also within the what the impulse move to the downside that is how i do it that is how i approach it and then from here i have been patiently waiting for price to all these months i've been waiting for price to get to this point now you might say you're very impatient uh, you wouldn't uh, necessarily be comfortable waiting this long but rem remember there are numerous asset classes that you can trade in the forex market right uh whether you, you're looking to trade gold or you're looking to trade oil whatever it may be if they said if you're still waiting for a setup on euro nzd other currency pairs were setting up right in the beginning of year it was the aud you had aud aud cad aud usd right uh so all those currencies were set were, 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 were giving you opportunities while euro nzd i was still waiting for everything to to set up right so 
do not focus on one thing, especially if you want to be lo- lo- looking at being more of a long-term trader, looking to gain to gain that long-term consistency. Just plot your, ma- your your levels on your monthly, on your weekly, and then just wait for price to get there, right? While you're still focusing on other currency pairs or other asset classes that might be giving you opportunities based on applying the very same approach or the very same system, right? Then EuroCAD, uh, it was a similar situation, started on the monthly. If we look on the monthly, where's the most recent low? Here's the most recent low because from here, it was what? supply was over exceeded by demand so buyers were in control so where were sellers in control on this move to the downside sellers were in control so where's the most recent high uh based on this it is up here right so that is the most recent high then if you look at looking to look for your supply levels firstly where's the fib from the high to the low right from the high to the low this is the 50 percent even if you could have used this as your high as your extreme high right here it also would have worked so that is the 50 percent fib level and then above that where can you see any supply level on this move to the downside or this uh, impulse move to the downside there's none that is valid based on how i approach things on the monthly so i drop down to the weekly and then same story i look for a valid one so above my my my, my 50 percent i look for a valid one and the one that I could spot was this one right here. And then I just waited for price to retest that. And then I went short, right? And like I said, future video, I'll go into the nitty gritties of how I actually execute, how I find my entries to get those sniper entries. But this is the beginning framework. This is the practical step by step that you can also use in your trading. You can take this and use, yeah, and you can essentially just take this and use it in your trading, right? Even with oil, it works with many, 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 many uh, uh, asset classes. Even with oil, I did not execute oil, neither did I buy oil, but it's the same approach that you could have used. We are at a monthly sub, at the monthly demand level. So in this case, it's a demand, right? In this case, it's a demand. So this is the, where was the high? Here was the high and here is the low, right? Based on where price is right now. And then it's a matter of plotting your FIB from the low to the high. Where's your 50%? Here's your 50%. Where's your valid um, demand level in this case? And this is a good example because we're looking to buy. So in this impulse move to the upside, simple words, buyers were, there were more buyers than sellers, more economic, more, more, more economic uh, jargon. Say, uh, supply was over exceeded by demand right so in this case we need we need to focus on demand levels if we're looking to sell oil we need to get those what those uh, supply levels from this move to the downside here not from this move to the upside so that is why i wouldn't do a break and retest personally based on how i approach the market and then we identify below 50 percent our valid demand levels and this is one that i have on the monthly because it is followed by a bullish engulfing candle and this is the level that i had here we go down to the weekly can we refine it even further based on the weekly time frame unfortunately not we can we cannot do that right here and then price eventually dropped down into this level and then we had this huge push up and even a gap up and then price really bounced back to it again right so this is how i approach it and like i said uh, I do not only use uh, technical analysis uh, for my bias. My bias is based on the fundamental aspect of things, what is happening based on the economics, the geopolitics. And then I use technical analysis to refine, to filter my trades, right? Is it now the right time to buy or is price at the right place where I feel it's it's cheaper for me to buy or is price at the right place where I feel it's expensive now for me to sell, right? Based on what the fundamentals have been telling me. And now I use the technical analysis side of things to filter my my, my positions, right? Am I, am I trading GBP USD or am I trading Euro USD? All of that, right? Based on the, 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 fun, the, the technical aspect of things. So technical analysis I use as a filter. And that is why I start on the monthly time frame and refine it to the weekly time frame. And I only focus on those levels because I'm looking to 
not not set and forget. I'm not I'm I'm not in that mindset, but I'm looking to catch those big moves. Like I said, minimum 300 pips. I want to catch those big moves easy, where price just bounces off and starts moving in my direction, right? So this is the simple framework that I use for my technical analysis, and this is how I start my my technical analysis, and then from there it's all about entry timing your entry end of day uh, or, or sorry not end of day but what time of the day and all of that but essentially based on on the four positions that i currently have running which is uh euro usd uh euro uh aud euro nzd and euro cad these are the reasons behind my technical analysis entry point why i took my entry at these specific levels or at this specific points how i entered I'll share with you in, 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 in the future video, right? So I hope you learned from this. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, cheers.